Welcome to Gardenwise Adventures. My name is Malie and today I have a question. And that question is, should I stop gardening? Now I did a video a little while ago about all the problems that I've been having in my garden. And I know that a lot of you have had a lot of problems in your gardens. And there's no way to know if these problems are gonna persist or if we're ever gonna see a great harvest. So my question is, should we stop gardening? Now, just to be clear, no, I am not going to stop gardening. I have gardened for many, many years. I could even say decades. Long enough that I've seen many hard years. And so I know that things will get better. And even if there are still continued problems, there will always be continued successes. So I wanted to go through with you today and show you why I am not going to stop gardening. And hopefully we can inspire you, even if you're feeling discouraged and downtrodden and like you're never going to get a harvest, kind of help encourage you to continue wanting to do that gardening thing that we all love to do. So let's start behind me with my green stalks. Now I'll link a video up above on when I planted these green stalks and all the hopes and plans that I had for them. And as you can see, there's quite a few empty holes in this one. And on this one, it looks magnificent but look at all those beans. I still have yet to get a harvest of beans from these plants, and I'm not sure why they're not producing. So if we look at these green stalks from a perspective of, did I get a harvest off of them? No, I have not gotten a harvest off of them. The, the lettuce bolted, the kale got aphids, you know, it, it was pretty bad. But look what I did get from them. I'm actually getting a harvest of chamomile, which I have not been able to get to grow in my garden for a long time. So there's a win. Another win are the marigolds. They're absolutely gorgeous. Final win is the main reason I put these green stalks here in the first place is the hummingbirds have loved my salvia, even though the salvia haven't grown the way that I had hoped they would. They're a little spindly, but there's enough of them in there together that the hummingbirds love them. So I'm looking for the wins. And even though the green stalks had several failures and I haven't got the harvest I'd hoped from them, there have been several wins and I am going to be using these again and I'm very glad that I have them. Now what about my squash? We see a few here and there, they're growing. We've got some spaghetti squash coming. Everything is spaghetti squash. I thought I planted some butternut squash, but it may be this little spindly thing might be the butternut squash that has no fruit on it. This one also might be a butternut squash. It also has nothing on it. And if you look back here, we've got a zucchini and a yellow squash where we're finally starting to see a yellow squash come on it. But really nothing except for dried up dead squash on the zucchini. It's been a really difficult year for squash. So should I give up and never plant squash again? Well, my answer is definitely not. Let me post a picture, if I can find it, of my squash last year so I can remember what this area can produce it produced a ton of beautiful squash. And let me show you what we're producing this year that is sparking my need to keep trying. Now I eat a lot of pepitas. Those are the uh, squash seeds that don't have any holes on them. And I really wanted to try pepitas here. And these have struggled. They've struggled and struggled. We've fought squash bugs. We've got vines that aren't growing, but look what we have down here. If you can see down there, we have a pepita squash that is ripening. And we have several more. So I think, I think if we can keep up the battle, we might actually be able to harvest some pepitas. There's hope in this world. Now it's mid-August and by this time, I have usually canned a ton of salsa. We've eaten tomatoes. It's been wonderful, but I've gotten maybe a handful of cherry tomatoes so far. And so it really makes me feel like I want to give up. But let me show you what is coming. It's a little bit going to be a little bit later than I had hoped. You know, it's mid-August right now and we'll probably get these, you know, in about a week. But let me show you what's coming. There's not a lot of them, but there is hope. 
I have wanted to try a pineapple tomato for many years. And look at this. This is a huge pineapple tomato and I think it is almost ripe. Here's a, here's a mushroom basket that I think is ready to harvest. Down here, we have got one of my very favorite black semen that is ready to harvest. And there are several more different types of tomatoes that I think are going to be ready to harvest here one of these days. This is a Kentucky beef steak. Look how big that is. And we have a ripe jet star. Now I don't have many tomatoes coming on and I may not have enough to make the ketchup that I had hoped that I'd been hoping to make this year, but there's always next year. This year is giving me hope because I'm seeing new things that I'm able to grow and there has been some success. Now another thing that is happening right now, I know you probably can't see it or feel it like I can, but I, we have had very, very little rain here in my town. You know, I live in Pleasant Grove, Utah, and there's very, been very, very little rain. But right now, I'm feeling drops. They're just drops, but they give me hope for a possible downpour. Now, I hope that the downpour waits until after I'm done with this video. But I wanted to show you just a few more things that have been giving me hope. Now, if you're feeling despondent, Go out into your garden and there's got to be at least one success. So out here, we have my ashwagandha and this is a success. These have almost hit three feet, which I think they only get about three to three and a half feet tall and we're gonna have an excellent harvest of roots. This is my first year growing ashwagandha. I had no hope of any success in them for them because I didn't think they were supposed to be able to grow here, but they are doing well and that gives me hope for next year. Maybe I will grow ash ashwagandha next year, maybe I won't, but at least I know that green things can grow on this property. And then the last thing that gives me hope. Look at this flower. It is absolutely gorgeous. This is an artichoke that never gave me any edible fruit. These parts right here are supposed to be the edible parts and they came out very, very thin, very late in the year. And it's taken two years to actually get flowers off this. So I decided instead of eating it to let it flower and I've got beauty instead of food. And that gives me hope. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I'm glad that I waited for it. Now, will I grow artichokes again? Probably not. But that means that this spot will open up and I can grow something else next year. So now I'm hoping this maybe will help you a little bit. Maybe you've had some really hard times this year gardening, and maybe you've had some successes. Definitely go out there and look on those successes. Think of past year successes. If you haven't had any successes that you can look at, find a friend or a neighbor who's had successes and go talk to them. Look at what they've done. Think about what you can do different next year and plan for next year. Definitely don't give up gardening. It's definitely worth it every step of the way. The failures teach us what we need to learn so that we can do better next year. So I hope this video has helped you. If it has helped you, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.